August is in the books, so here are all the games I completed in August. So the very first game that I completed was an RPG that resembles a TTRPG. You are a cyborg who has to figure out what you want to do. Do you want to leave the ship? You know that there's men and women out there that do not like you because you basically were a regular human and your brain was surgically implanted or your memories were implanted into the cyborg. And you have to go in and assess everybody on the ship and it kind of like reminds me of Aliens where you go through the ship and you see all the bad stuff and the good stuff in there and you have to like figure out where do I want to go, what do I want to do. And each day is a cycle and you have so many cycles before something bad happens or good happens and you don't know what's going to happen. So you'll see like a time, everything's timed. So you'll see a timer on the side or the bottom and you'll know like, okay, something's happening in this many cycles. What do I need to do? Do I need to like let it happen? If you do let it happen, you're going to be attacked and you have two health bars. The first health bar is your energy, what you need to do, daily tasks, different things. Each one takes an energy. And then the other health bar is your main core, your body, which if it's damaged or hurt, if it doesn't get food, it starts starving, it will deplete that. And you want to keep that health bar up because the number of dice you roll, you have six di six sided dice. And each dice is based on the number of slots you have in your health bar. And I think like the max you can roll is like five or six. And every time you let your health deplete, you go and only have so many dice. And so each task takes energy and dice and you have to roll like, okay, so you got a five or six. This is going to be a really good success. If you roll like a two or a three, you're like, mm, I might have something bad happen. So you have to do easier tasks with the two or three dice. And any dice that you roll that's like a five or six, the hard ones, the hard tasks that you need to do, you definitely need to make sure that those are the dice you use. So it's kind of like a balance of keep my energy up, keep everything going, roll good dice, keep everything rolling, and keep your relationships good on your ship. Because as you go throughout the ship, the farther along you go, the farther you get to the end of the story. And it does tell you, which is a good and a bad thing because you're like, oh, I know that the farther I get to the ship, end of the ship, that's when the end of the story is going to happen. And there's multiple endings. Uh, it's good. It does have replay value. So if you do play it, you can play it multiple times to see what would happen if you choose a different cyborg or if you choose different people to help. Uh, there's a lot of side quests. I did do a lot of side quests to try to like build up the ship. And I won't tell you the ending because I don't want to spoil it, but it was a little surprising to me how they ended it. Um, it's got to like, uh, you choose two major things that could happen. I think there is multiple other ways to, to get off the ship or stay on the ship. But the one that I chose, the path that I chose, it only had two options. Either you leave the ship or you stay on the ship. And I did enjoy it. I like it. It wasn't an amazing RPG, I will admit. It was a lot of reading. You have to read a lot. And so if you're not into that, you don't like dice rolling and reading, it's not going to be up your alley. So if you're into RPGs like that, definitely try it out for sure. I know it's on Game Pass. I don't know how long it's going to stay on Game Pass, but try it for free. The next game I played is Botany Manor. You are a woman who is in a manor and you're trying to create a book for botany. And you're trying to figure out how to grow plants, how to make a, a better experience overall, and document everything in that book that you are given. You want to try to solve as many puzzles as you can. I know that there's like a way to 100% it, get out of the flowers, get everything. I enjoy this game. Um, it is on the shorter end. There's only like four or five chapters. If you do try to get every single flower, it's going to give you more replay value because you're trying to like find every flower. I did enjoy the puzzles. There was like secret entrances in the actual manor itself. There was keys to a lot of stuff. You had to find the keys. So you had to open up a, a door to a certain side area to get a key to go to this area. You had to find all the seeds. They were hidden throughout the manor. And then there was multiple different pots and plants that would need like certain soils, certain ways. Like some needed more water, some needed heat, some needed a lot of wind. And it was a fun game. I did enjoy it. So if it's, you don't know, not into an environmental puzzle kind of game, story driven game, this is not up your alley, but 
I have a couple people that watch that this is what you would like. So definitely try it out. It is on Game Pass as well. So it's free. So if you don't like it, you didn't waste your money. Then I finished another RPG and it is Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. I do have Final Fantasy Origins on PS1. Um, sadly, I lost my memory card and I was halfway through the RPG and you all know that you spend a lot of hours and you kind of like, do I really want to start over again? So I kind of let it go. Um, and then when the Pixel Remaster happened, I was like, hell yeah, I'll definitely try it again. Uh, it was difficult at the end. Chaos kicked my ass, I will not lie. I did not do any buffs. I played it legit because I wanted to play it because I was like, I played it and almost finished it. It is difficult if you don't level up. Um, for the regular NES version, there's 50 max levels. For the Pixel Remaster, there's 99 levels you can get to. I did get... Uh, so my, my four Warriors of Light were... I had a Warrior, a Monk, a, a White Mage, and a Black Mage. And I did make sure that I get as many spells as I could. Um, there is a spell that did help me. Uh, there was a couple spells that I recommend that you pick up as many as you can for chaos at the very end. But it is a kind of an RPG where they just let you go wherever you want to go. If you go too far in some area, you're going to get your ass handed to you and you will die. I like RPGs like that where they're like kind of like Resident Evil where you're walking around a certain area and you're like, oh, not supposed to be here yet. I'm not that far. I don't have that gun. I don't have that level. This is kind of like the same thing. You don't have the sword. You don't have a spell you need. You need to get a max of whatever you can, level up as many as you can. And so basically my tactic, my strategy was at the very end, I kind of like beefed up um, my monk because he could hit hard. And then I kept healing with my white mage and my black mage. I kept using all my spells. I was like super buff on my black mage. I made sure he was totally maxed out on everything I could and I just got all the highest levels I could and just get out of every spell. So definitely go for that. It was easier when I know some people just kept getting like a lot of red mages but nah. I went with my old like lot that I had from the beginning for the original origins. The only thing that I'm sad at, um, so for those who don't know, the PS1 version had a couple extra cutscenes and I didn't see those in the Pixel Remaster. I think they're trying to be more like the NES version, but it would have been nice to have some of the cutscenes that you had from the PS1 version back on there. So I don't know if, if they just decided to go back with just like keeping it simple, but it was a little bummer kind of thing. But it, overall, great RPG. If you ever can find it for on sale, I know they sell them individually on like the Nintendo Store, PlayStation Store, you can get them separately. So definitely get that for sure if you don't want to buy all of them. I know I'm going to probably try to keep going through, but I'm taking my time because I'm doing, you know, a lot of RPGs, so I don't want to get burnt out, but definitely a great game for sure. After that, I played a very disappointing game. It is New Tales from the Borderlands. This game, the pacing was off. Uh, it's supposed to be kind of like keep going with the storyline. You see some of the characters from the original Tales of the Borderlands and Borderlands games in general. But it wasn't a Borderlands game. Um, there's no cussing. There was a little bit a smidge of cussing. Um, there was a little bit of like gore and violence and like humor that you get from Borderlands games. I'm used to like Borderland games being like super gory, super over the top slapstick humor, uh, weird crap that you do like, really did they just do that? I played all the and beat all the Borderlands games and this one really disappointed me. There'll be scenes where you're like, okay, like are we gonna get into action? Are we gonna get into this? No, we are getting the shop checked out for if it should be allowed to stay as a shop, a yogurt shop. Really? We're gonna do that <laughs> and in between. I don't get it. I don't know why they went with this. I don't know if they're trying to be more like, um, overall be more mainstream kind of thing, but it didn't work for me. I don't recommend this game. If you can find it for free, if they ever put it on a Game Pass or PS Plus, definitely try it out. But otherwise, don't waste your money. If you can find it for like 10 bucks, like if they're selling it to just get rid of it, definitely get it. But yeah, I recommend Tales of the Borderlands or any other Borderlands games, but 
not this one. The fifth game I played was a fighter. It's Sonic the Fighters. This is an Xbox 360 game I saw on sale. It was like $5 on the store. And basically you're all the Sonic characters and you go through the story. I play the story mode and you battle all the characters from all the Sonic games. And then you always battle, you know, my favorites, uh, the very end, Mr. Glasses dude. <laughs> and he's in a big ball. If you know who it is, put in the comments. <laughs> I think everybody knows Sonic characters by now, but yeah, uh, I played as Sonic. Um, he has a couple moves. This is not like a super intricate like combo kind of game. It's basically like you have different moves and most of them are charge moves for, I think, I don't know the other characters. I didn't really play a lot of them, but it looked like a lot of them have a charge move. Most of the time they have a block and then they have like a couple moves of like kicks and punches and stuff like that. So it's like Different combos, but not like a ton of like, you're going to be like, oh wow, this is a huge combo. Like, you're not going to get like an epic combo. You're going to get like a basic combo set, but I enjoyed it. It was a fun game. Definitely worth a sit down. It's not that long either. It's like in most of the fighters back in the day where it's like a couple hours and you can finish it and be done. Uh, I will say I don't think it's worth full price if you ever find it and somebody's trying to sell it for like a lot of money. Not worth it. Get it for like 10 bucks or less and you'll have a good time with it. After that, I played a game called The Big Con. This is a game that was an indie game that I saw got like, I think it got a Kickstarter. Correct me if I'm wrong. And basically you are a young woman who is overseeing a video game store, a rental store with VHSs. And you're with your mom and then your mom tells you, hey, go somewhere off to the side. But you're nosy and you overhear the conversation with a guy who's in a suit and he tells her you haven't paid off your loan you waited too long and now you're gonna lose your store if you don't pay off within I think a week or two you're gonna lose your store and she goes hell no I'm going to figure this out and the mom is like no go to band camp go do your thing you need to go not worry about this we'll figure it out and so you don't listen and you decide to just venture off and figure out how you're gonna get the money and the money's not cheap it's like 50k you have to get and so you meet this other kid who's like, hell yeah, let's go together and we'll go figure it out. And you decide to steal money from the rich people. So you go to a, a town that looks like Las Vegas and your object of the game is to steal money from different safes and different things like that. And you have amazing soundtrack. It's because it's Carmen Sandiego's group, the you know, the acapella group that did Carmen Sandiego's theme song. They did that soundtrack. So if you really like Carmen Sandiego, you're going to enjoy this soundtrack. The game is, is very simple. You are pickpocketing people along the way to get money to get like a bus ticket to go to the next town to go to the next town. And then you finally have to like problem solve to figure out how to get to the main goal which is still from this comp like this couple of people that are rich. It's a fun game. It's just again I don't think I would have paid full price for this because it's a game where it's a one and done. I'm not going to probably replay it again now that I know all the story. But definitely a fun time. It's on Game Pass. Try it out. I don't know how long... It, again, I never know how long these games are going to be on Game Pass, but I had a good time with this one. Then I played a game called The Exit 8. This is kind of like PT. If you remember what PT was, it was an endless loop until you figured out the puzzle and then it moved you to the next section. This is the same thing. It's an endless loop. You are walking through and you see... You're trying to get to the end of an alley and you're in like a train station kind of like cubicle thing where you don't know how to get out of it. And so you start looking around your environment and you're like, oh, wait, the next time I go around, I see number one. Is there anything different? So you have to look at the, all the objects. There is like puzzles everywhere of like, is the posters different? Is the doors different? Is the guy walking by different? Is there something at the end of the hall? Is there something on the ceiling floor? You have to look, it, it's very tedious and it could take you hours if you don't pay attention because you're like, oh, I'm at number seven. Crap, I didn't realize that number eight was different. So basically, if you don't see any changes, you walk forward. If you see some changes, you run back because something bad's gonna happen. And it's creepy as hell. I was very jumpy because <laughs> There's like doors opening, slamming, people opening the door and smiling at you. The guy who walks by, he can smile at you. He can have a glitchy face. It's so creepy. There could be people at the end of the hall. There's twins, like the shining. 
there's twins that if they pop up and you don't run fast, they run at you and then they just like scare the crap out of you because they get like right there at your face. There's also like blood and different things like that. So amazing game. I don't know who made it. I think it's somebody who was from Japan that made this game. Excellent game. Definitely find it. It's worth full price. You will have hours of fun because you have to find all the anomalies. The only thing that's sad is it didn't give you a platinum trophy. I played the game for like a couple hours and at the end of it, I was like, damn, like I didn't get the platinum trophy. It's kind of like brothers that you get all the stuff done. You get all the trophies, but you don't get a platinum one. But definitely creepy and don't play with the lights off. Then I played another RPG. It's a dungeon crawler called Minecraft Dungeons. Um, this was a simplistic game. Uh, you basically were given a task of defeating the evil guy, but you had to go through all the dungeons and defeat his little minions. And I enjoyed this RPG. I, I enjoy dungeon crawlers. I haven't played a dungeon crawler in a long time since like Diablo 3 when I beat that. That was like back in the Xbox 360's heyday. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna play another dungeon crawler and it's fun. Uh, it's probably on the shorter end of the spectrum of RPGs. It's probably 10 hours or less, depending on how long you, if you try to 100% it, you might get a really good value out of it. I didn't take that long. I think I beat it in like four hours. So if you are wanting something shorter, go for that. Uh, it's definitely got different levels. So if you wanna challenge yourself, I stick with the normal level. But there is harder levels if you want to like be at hard mode you can do that it does have different swords different things it's just like a normal rpg you build yourself up you get your stuff and you can collect different things i did enjoy that you can get different armor um and you can have different weapons i enjoyed trying out the different weapons to see what they did and it was a good time uh there was a couple creatures that were hilarious like they had skeletons and the normal stuff from minecraft so if you like Minecraft and you have not played an RPG in a while, try this out. It's definitely up my alley. I enjoyed it. And I will try any other... Um, they might make another one. If they do, I will try that one as well. Then I did another RPG. And that was There's Nothing to Do in This Town. This is an itch.io game. It was a guy from Europe. Um, he basically made an RPG... That is a few puzzles. So basically what you have to do is you're in a zombie fested town and you have to find money, help people out to solve a puzzle to get to another thing to get the main object. There's like a checklist that you see at the beginning of the game. You have to check all the boxes and then you're done with the game. This is a very short RPG, a couple hours. You're not gonna take that long. It's one and done because there's nowhere to save um, if you play the game, you can play it on browser, you can download it, but I didn't really have a save checkpoint thing. So play it all in one sitting. It's not going to take that long, but yeah, definitely make sure that you solve all the puzzles. There is, you know, money all around there. You get one quid, two quid, you know, stuff like that. And there's funny little side things like messing with a, a kid or messing with somebody. And then they'd be like, leave me alone. Why are you bothering me? You weirdo. And so you're like, okay, cool. But yeah, enjoy the Game Boy game. It was a very simplistic style game, RPG. And I will say that I'm going to find this developer's games. I see there's a couple more he has made, but I don't know what happened to him. If anybody in the comments know what happened to that guy, please let me know. I, I really enjoyed the game and I was like, oh, let me see if he's made any other games. Don't know. He kind of just stopped making games. I seen there's like two or three other games and that was it. So I'm kind of bummed. I always find games at the tail end or later in life of their, like, they make it like a few years back and I'm like, damn it. I would have loved to like support it and, you know, get some more of these games, but oh well, say la vie. And the very last game that I beat for the month is A King's Tale Final Fantasy 15. This is a hack and slash beat em up game where you are about 30 years before the main game, the other RPG that I've played a couple years back. And basically it's young Noctis, he's sitting down and he's letting his dad tell him a story. And it's basically a story from the king's past and you get to see like, you know, different people from that are like the father of this character and the person of that character and stuff like that. And so I had a good time with it. 
it is a fun hack and slash. It does have some difficulty to it if you want to beef it up again. But the normal difficulty was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I will say that there was different creatures that were hilarious. I love the cactus. Everybody kept trying to get the cacti to like attack me. And I'm like, nope, we don't need no more cactus in this. Nope. Mm -mm. So you, you do have the same fighting style as the RPG for Final Fantasy XV. So if you like that action stuff, you'll get to be able to do all the stuff that you saw from the game. It's not going to be changing anything. So... It's the same, and which I, makes sense because he is the son of the king, so he's going to learn all the five styles. He's going to go through and learn everything. But it did have some replay value because you can go in and try different, get different endings. There's two different endings, which I got both because I failed the first time. So technically, I don't need to play it again. But free, it uh, was a pre-order bonus for Final Fantasy XV, which I didn't even know about. Which was kind of weird that I played Final Fantasy XV. They had the Royal Edition and then I didn't even see that on like the recommended feed. Because I was like, what is, you know, like, what is this? It's like on my feed now because I've been playing a bunch of RPGs. So I was like, hey, you've been playing RPGs. Try this out. I was like, sure. But that would have been nice to know that ahead of time because a lot of people didn't know about this. So definitely try it out. It's a good game and it's worth your time. It's we love free! And there you have it. I beat 10 games for this month, so I am now at 80 games in total. Definitely try it out if you want to keep track. It helps you remember all the good memories for your games. If you are doing the 12 RPG challenge, where are you at in your RPG journey? And I'm at like 11, I think I'm at it. So I have one more to go and then I'm done. So. If you're new, please consider hitting the sub button. It helps out the channel. If you're rolling out, give it a like before you roll out. And I'll catch you next video. Bye, everybody.